thank you to <coughs> to WIDA for both the collaboration with ICTD um, and for um, organising this session. Uh, I'll talk a bit about this um, database. I think Mick will will say a bit more um, afterwards. Uh, to, to kind of go back a step, I'm going to take some credit and then I'm going to disassociate myself. This, the work on this data kind of comes from my frustrations in about 2003, 4, 5, trying to start doing work on tax and finding that none of the sources from the world development indicators to the government financial statistics had the kind of coverage or quality of data that you felt you could do much with. You know, you continually came across things like uh, ratios of tax to GDP greater than 100% that just tell you that nobody's using this data, nobody's even looked at it, nobody's even thought about what they're putting into the data set and nobody's picking them up on it. You know, and this you know, speaks to a bigger issue, which is the neglect of tax as a development issue going back at least a, a few decades, which over the last five years has, has very happily started to reverse. Um, and the ICTD um, is, is an important um, part of that process um, for which Mick deserves enormous credit. Um, so this data set then became something that when the ICTD formed it picked up um, and actually took forward. We'd had a few false starts beforehand and Wilson Pritchard who's a research director at the ICTD is the person who has really done an enormous amount of work on this so any credit is uh, is due to him. But Kyle McNabb who's, who's here um, has worked on the last revision and can answer all your technical questions. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, I will try not to take too much time, so uh, I will wave this working paper at you, which has a great deal of um, detail, copies of which are available down here and, of course, online. Um, the starting point is this, um, that the existing data are so bad, or were so bad, that you, know, you have to be worried about most of the tax and development research results that rely on those data sets. Um, at the very least, whether they're entirely robust, possibly whether they um, stand up at all. Um, one thing that you see over the last 10 years in particular is a growing recognition of that problem, leading to researchers developing their own uh, individual data sets, which tend to be great for the particular question they're looking at, but are not necessarily terribly transparent, not necessarily great for looking at other questions, and the decisions that individual researchers make in putting those data sets together aren't necessarily in the public domain. So their use is, is somewhat um, limited, uh, and it's difficult um, to use them as the basis going forward for uh, replication and for other uh, research. Um, this is a list of problems which I'm not going to um, spend my time going through. It's the kind of things that you would imagine, mainly coverage and comparability, right? But the particular issues around natural resource revenues um, and around GDP series, different tax data sets tend to have to rely on different GDP series. And sometimes they change GDP series within, um, within even within individual countries, um, within the data set. And this can introduce very large um, jumps if it's not transparent that it's happened or if people deal with rebasing of GDP in a bad way then the ratios can go all over the place um, in a way that just doesn't reflect what was actually happening um, and that's a problem that you find time and again uh, Tony very kindly said he'd, he'd heard that this data set is better than the IMF's um, I'm afraid that's not setting a high bar the IMF data set has a series of issues, particularly around this GDP series question, where there are just jumps that nobody could reasonably look at and think this is what happened in this country, which is the result of just kind of mechanistically um, applying an approach without thinking about what the numbers mean. Um, to give just one example, this is, this is a set of different um, series that we put together for Ghana. And this is just tax to, uh, to GDP, using the GDP sources from the various um, series themselves. Keenan Mansour, which is um, researchers in the IMF Fiscal Affairs Department, the Government Financial Statistics, um, the IMF's uh, CR, I can't remember what that stands for, and the World Development Indicators. Um, if you think about those individual series on their own, you're probably okay. If you start combining them, you've got a problem 
Um, and if you have a mechanistic approach that takes from one if it's there and if not takes from another without saying, uh, without considering what that's going to do, then you've got a real problem and you're going to have jumps in the data that just don't make any sense. If you put in a common data, a common GDP series, actually you feel quite reassured that all these data pretty much line up. Not perfectly and not every time, and there are some remaining um, inexplicable issues in some of the data that I'll mention a bit later. But by and large, you deal with a lot of issues just by having a common GDP series, something that seems a bit obvious but just isn't done in a consistent way. Um, all right, so what do we do in the, the government revenue data set, the GRD? A standard revenue classification, um, just to give you a sense of that, the, these pictures show the different revenue classifications that different sources use, and even at that distance, you can see these are just completely different animals. Um, so imposing a single classification is kind of important to get towards some kind of consistency and comparability. Um, the, other than combining existing sources, the bigger thing we do is to add in Article 4 data that allows us to fill in a lot of gaps. Um, the uh, remaining issues are particularly around national natural resources, social contributions, how you address federal states where you know things get different. But the GDP series is a big one. And finally, we did try at different times doing mechanistic approaches saying, okay, if this data exists, take this, if not, take this, if not this. And it just doesn't work. If you don't manually go through each series for each country, um, it, it just, you know, you end up with things that just don't make sense. So there's no getting away from that. Now, in some ways, it would be cleaner to have a, a mechanical approach. Um, so what we do is, is make sure that in the metadata, every decision that's taken is expressed as clearly and transparently as possible. And if people want to take different decisions, obviously, they're, they're able to do that. But at least you're certain about where each individual data point comes from and what choice has been made. Um, all right, there's the structure which I will skip by. Um, this just gives you a sense of how much um, broader the, the coverage is compared to the fiscal affairs uh, data set in the IMF, the Article 4 data on its own, the government financial statistics, and the world development indicators. The government revenue data set is better than bad. Um, uh, I would say it's a lot better than bad. And I think it is, by some distance, better than any alternatives. Um, but we also need to recognise there are still serious issues, limitations. We don't deal, we don't originate any new data. So there is still significant missing data that just isn't in any of the sources we've tapped. There are some ways that some of that may be addressed over the next few years, but it will remain the case that where data doesn't exist, there isn't going to be anything in the series. There are still questions with resource revenues, which are often particularly badly recorded in terms of whether they're tax or not tax. Um, and whether they're separated out at all, um, which, can, which can introduce real, real problems for um, particular countries. And as I said, the variation across sources is often inexplicable. Sometimes we just can't see what it is that has led one series to have one number and another series to have another number. Um, and the metadata around some of the series is insufficiently good to allow you to dig further into that in some cases there will just be things that we'll never know although again as people use this more and more we are starting to get feedback that often highlights particular errors in one or other underlying series that we weren't aware of so there's an ongoing process of of improvement with with user um, help very quickly this is just one example of something that's been done with this data set that you couldn't have done before um, this is from the World Investment Report uh, of this year. UNCTAD researchers crunched the data down, had to make some assumptions and a few extrapolations, but it's, I think it's, it's pretty solid, to actually work out what proportion of um, tax revenues in developing countries uh, multinationals are responsible for and what the relative proportions of that um, are. It's not perfect, but it's actually quite an interesting picture, which you couldn't have seen before this data set. And one of the things it gives you is that the, um, the corporate income tax payments are something in the region of $220 uh, billion a year, which is then interesting thinking about the other kind of things that the Tax Justice Network looks at, which is the extent of tax evasion and tax avoidance. I'm kind of going to skip through this because I think I should leave the time for others. Um, but, you know, we have... 
estimates of this scale, about 190 billion in revenue loss each year for um, global losses to individual tax evasion. That's Gabriel Zuckman's work, which is, I think, by and large, including by him, thought to be a low-end uh, estimate. Um, Jim Henry's work puts a rather higher um, figure on the total of undeclared wealth globally. Um, thinking about multinational uh, companies, we have IMF and UNCTAD um, estimates of 100 uh, billion in lost revenue for developing countries. That's UNCTAD's estimate of one particular form of multinational profit shifting, um, where FDI is directed through tax havens and um, through special purpose entities. The IMF work is a much broader figure for tax spillovers generally and effectively the impact of havens on developing country revenues, and it's about twice that. So given that we've got the World Investment Report estimate, that puts those, um, those values at something from 50 to 100% of the revenues currently being obtained by developing countries, which allows us to scale it in a way that we just couldn't have done uh, effectively before. Um, the last thing to say, you know, I talked about the neglect of this and the progress that's being made um, in terms of national revenue data. There is also progress at the international level in terms of requiring multinationals to report their activities on a country by country basis, which allows you to see if it ever becomes public, currently it's not, but would allow you to see the extent to which profits are being declared in places where the economic activity is not taking place and how big an effect that is. Um, there's also a set of um, measures around the exchange of tax information between jurisdictions and the identification of ultimate beneficial owners of companies, trusts and foundations and bank accounts that will eventually allow individual tax evasion to be cracked down. At the moment, however, most developing countries are shut out of that process um, and that's the big problem now. It looks like it'll work for OECD countries, it may not work for others. Um, uh, in terms of country by country reporting, that's only going to go to the tax authority of the home country of multinationals, which may then exchange it with uh, or provide it to developing country tax authorities or not. Um, so it's kind of the least transparent transparency measure that they could have come up with. So there's an agenda there, again, around building the data to actually understand what's going on rather better. But at least at the moment, I'd say the glass is, uh, is half full. Um, the very last point I want to make is just that this is a plug for us. All of those measures, the automatic exchange of information, country by country reporting, identification of beneficial owners, this is what Tax Justice Network came up with in 2003, 4, 5 when we started. Those were the three big things, which, you know, the reaction to that was, you are crazy, none of this will ever happen. Um, Ten years later, um, thanks to TJN's good work and possibly also a, a global financial crisis, that became the agenda of the G8 and the G20. That's, you know, that's why the glass is half full. And it's now right in the middle of the financing for development document. What we haven't got is delivery of any of these data measures for any serious number of developing countries yet or into the public for researchers. So we're halfway there, but we're not there yet. Thank you.